welcome back to Trojan TV. I'm Maria Dukowitz. And this is Chris Doyle. Let's see what we have for our shows today. That's pretty cool. Okay, so our girls hockey team finished first in the regular play, beating St. T's for the first time ever. Chris, can you tell us more about this? Sure, Rhea. The girls set a record this year by beating St. T's for the first time ever in regulation play. They even went to the Bay of Quinney finals, but unfortunately lost to St. T's there. We also interviewed Coach Crawford and some of the girls. Chris, what are you doing? Let's just cut to them. So I played center this year, and my thoughts were we did way better this year than we did last year. We ended up in first place. It was really good. It was a lot different, and it was really fun. So right now I'm committed to Quinnipiac University. It's in Hamden, Connecticut. I'm hoping to continue with that and go to that school after. So um, an NCAA Division I scholarship. So I want to play hockey for the rest of my life. Um, some of the skills that I think, um, definitely skating. Skating is one of the biggest parts of the game. If you don't have speed, then you can't really do anything. That's my opinion. Um, also being able to stick handle quick hands and just um, having passion and love for the game. So something I could give to someone coming up is just enjoy it. Like it's going to be fun. You're going to have a great experience. Um, it's gonna, it's really exciting to play. Everyone's it's just like a family atmosphere, and just try your hardest. We all like to see everyone try. So yeah. Um, I play center this year, and my feelings towards the Trojan ladies is it was a really fun and team atmosphere. Um, getting to know everyone and beating Saint D's, and overall becoming first in the league. So my main focus was hockey, so I had to give up a lot of my other sports. So for soccer, I had to give that one up because I preferred playing hockey over soccer. And soccer, a lot of the driving was to Ottawa, and you didn't have time to do anything else. Uh, well, we do a lot of dynamic like warm-up movements, like high knees and butt kicks, and we drink water. So. I feel like my skating is very good. The highest moment by far would be beating St. T's for the first time and placing first overall. Uh, yes, it was very fun, like getting the day off school, and we uh, we had a bit of a rough start, but we played well once we got into it, but it was sad to lose to St. T's. Um, I want to keep playing hockey throughout my whole high school career and basketball also. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to continue hockey for the rest of my life. Originally, the team that we took over um, had a pretty good nucleus of players, and at that time, uh, St. Teresa's had a, a hockey skills academy, which we had, but we very few girls were actually in the course. So my, my plan was to get more girls interested in taking the course, and that would give me an opportunity to work with those kids one-on-one -on, -one on a regular basis. Uh, so once we got that working, we ended up having a couple of uh, really solid seasons. One year, it was, I believe it was 2012, we qualified for OFSA, and uh, we only had four losses going into OFSA that year, all four of them by one goal to St. Teresa's. So that was a testament to the girls that we had and uh, their work ethic. Uh, we had a couple lean years after that. Um, once we got a new crop of girls, the last couple of years, the, the programs made a big rebound and part and parcel with a few of the kids that, we've, uh, that, that have come to the school. And since we've had that nucleus of girls, our program has gone in leaps and bounds. We finished eighth three years ago in the league of 12. Uh, up to this year, uh, last year we finished third in the regular season. And we ended up finishing third at Bay Aquini and we were, we, we had limited in the first game at uh, Casa last year. But this year our goal was to be undefeated uh, in the regular season, which we did. We had that really exciting game where we were one nothing uh, over St. Teresa's. It was an incredible moment because it was the first time in the school's history we've ever beat them and uh, made a little bit of news in, in the local area. The other thing, we wanted to win Bay of Quinney, and we were very, very close. Tie game, overtime, bad break goes, and we end up losing. And uh, I told the girls, we get another chance at them hopefully next week. And uh, we end up playing uh, at Casa. We ended up uh, beating uh, the number one seed out of Kawartha, which was St. Mary, uh, out of Coburg. And we beat them 3-2. Um, and our last game, we ended up uh, what we thought was a tying goal, uh, with about a minute and 30 to go, was waved off by the referee, and we pulled our goalie in the last uh, minute and 30 seconds to go. 
of the game and uh, we took a gamble and it didn't pay off for us but the girls learned a ton from it well each coach has a different philosophy I like to uh, like I said I'd keep it light with this group because it is high school hockey we're not working on uh, the Olympic gold medal here we're just trying to make sure these girls have a great experience so I don't shorten my bench first of all I only had 12 players it's really hard to shorten your bench when you only have 12 but uh, I try to encourage our girls to play as much uh, a routine as possible so if I have three lines and uh, I'm not going to shortchange our girls uh, unless it's a situation where I have to and I, it's in a tight game uh, like for instance the overtime uh, against uh, St. T's we was we had to go to three on three which we've never done before and uh, I had to shorten the bench because you just can't roll 12 people through that lineup because it's before you know it the game's over well first of all I like to actually mention the fact that you know if you're if you're a, a student uh, and you're going in your catchment area is your particular school. If you're going to Centennial, for instance, by all means, go to that school. You know, this shouldn't be about recruiting. It should be about, uh, you know, going to the school that's going to best fit you. And so we try to encourage our girls from our local catchment area to, to, to come to our school because, first of all, with the hockey program, you look at the numbers, we have 12. Uh, and we, yet we were the best team uh, in, in the regular season. And... Uh, if we have uh, an additional four or five girls, now I've got up to 15, 16. That's great. No one's going to get cut. But if you go to certain schools, uh, you know, they might have 30 people, 40 people on a roster. There's a school in Peterborough that has 40 girls on their roster. That's not a good decision if you're a young girl that wants to play or a young boy that wants to play in high school in whatever sport you choose. So there's different philosophies. Our philosophy is we have a small school. We try to maximize everything we have, and uh, we encourage everybody to come out and be part of a team. Next up, we have a spotlight on Trojan Hoops, a program that runs every year at Moira, organized by the school. It's recreational basketball for grades three to eight. Sir, are you ready for your interview? Uh, yes, I am. All right, fantastic. Uh, we'll just dry you off there. I know it's been a rough game. Um, what interests me in Trojan Hoops is that um, we get to play every Wednesday, and I have like nothing to do when hockey's over. I only play baseball, but that's it. But Trojan Hoops gives me another opportunity to get active. Uh, it went really good, Dusty. Um, we had a major comeback. Um, in our game tonight. They should definitely do it. It's pretty fun. Do it every Wednesday. I feel great now. Uh, Thank you so much for that. I've, I've even done skills in the first 20 minutes of the game uh, uh, for four years now. It's my fourth year and it's my last year able to do any of that stuff. So uh, this year really it gets more emotional than anything and I've uh, only been able to come out to a few events so far and uh, I really wish I can come out more but uh, with the uh, prior uh, stuff I have to complete and uh, a job now, I do need to make sure I'm uh, covering all perspectives and mm -hmm. uh, Trojan Hoops did get bumped down sadly and uh, being four years in it really does uh, affect me emotionally. Trojan Hoops, it's, uh, it's a program for uh, people grades three through eight can uh, come in and get basketball skills, so it's 20 minutes of basketball skills every day and then uh, 40 minutes of game time. So they get game time experience as well as they're getting uh, coached by people who know the sport high school students who are getting their volunteer hours, so it's great for the high school students as well. Uh, it's a great opportunity, uh, very low price, for people to be able to get in and uh, learn the skills early so that when they, if they do want to pursue basketball, they're getting all these abilities and they're going to be ahead of a lot of other people in the, in the sport. So going in, you're going to be first looked at as one of the higher people. I will tell you right now, I joined Children's Hoops uh, in my grade five year. I, I did Children's Hoops and uh, I fell in love with it. I didn't fall in love with the game, I fell in love with the... Uh, the joy, the charisma of the players, the coaches' uh, energy, and uh, I really put that into what I do now as I coach. I really want to show that uh, every player has, the, uh, has their voice, has their opportunities. Uh, I want to show as much joy and charisma, and, and uh, if that causes me to be really loud, which it seems to be all the time, I do end up being a lot louder of a person, uh, just to make sure I do end up getting things done effectively and uh, uh, with good, uh, good will. It's a very well organized sport that the kids can look forward to every week. Uh, they get a lot of exposure um, to different skills, um, you know, um, 
real knowledge and, and it's team building. They uh, develop mentorships with some of the students from Moira. Um, it's, a, it's a really good group and it's very inexpensive. Well, both of my children have done Trojan Hoops. Um, it started, uh, they attend uh, one of the feeder schools for Moira Secondary, Harry J. Clark. Uh, it started when my daughter was in grade two or three and she played every year up. Uh, it was something that was sent home from school um, and she's always been very athletic and, and wanting to, you know, join sports and, and such. And of course, my son, her younger brother, followed right in those footsteps. And um, now she's a, a coach for one of the teams and, and he plays on her team. Um, it's been, it, it really has helped the dynamics of their relationship because when they come here, they're not brother and sister, but coach and player. So it's been... Um, a real interesting uh, transition for communication and <laughs> relationship management between a brother and sister, but it, it's worked out really, really well. Um, and you know, they haven't hurt each other, so <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they get along very well, anyways. But this is something that's an activity for them to do every week. Uh, we've been coming for years, and we look forward to it every week. Right. I would just question why. I, like, why wouldn't you want them to go? It's organized. It's at the school. You can sit and watch. It's something for them to get out of the house. And, and again, they get the shirt. They get a ball usually at the end of the season. They get eight weeks of coaching. And that's just not playing games. That's skills and games. So they're learning a great deal for $40. You can't, do you know, like, you, you can't get that anywhere else. That's very reasonable. And it, it's, they're meeting kids from other schools that they could perhaps be going to high school with. So it really does help transition relationships and, and team building. Trojan Hoops is a great program for young kids to come in and play a little bit of basketball, have fun, and learn team skills. Um, I've been playing it for a couple years, and it's just really fun. Uh, it was good, but no, like the high. Well, uh, actually, uh, the game, it, it seemed all but lost after the first quarter, but they found it in themselves and they pulled themselves back on track with seven straight baskets and we ended up winning one of the biggest upset, upsets I've ever seen in Trojan Hoops history. You weren't there for last year when I coached. Um, um, I'll just say it's really fun and like you should do it. Um, my father actually did, you know, it's a, and uh, he told me it's a basketball league and I really do like basketball so I decided to take my, take my chances and join the league. Oh, it's been great. I've been, you know, shooting them. I've been scoring. Really fun time. And, uh, yeah. The kids being a part of it. Well, we've heard about Trojan Hoops for a long time, and my son just decided that he wanted to extend his, uh, I guess, practice time and extend his skills by coming out to Trojan Hoops. And word of mouth, I guess, is basically how he's been able to uh, find out about it. I love it. They're having fun. They're learning skills. They're developing. Um, lots of uh, you know, team play, fun. It's, uh, it's enjoyable to watch and see that they're having fun. I would and say take away the barriers and just let them go and let them develop and let them have some fun. It's a great way to encourage them to play basketball. Okay, Chris, I guess that's the end of the show. Well, that's it for April. We'll see you all in the way. We hope to see you all back. This is Chris Doyle. And Rhea Dukewitz signing off. First time we got that right.